Is anybody still working? A whole place full of people bickering, fighting, and lying. It makes me real sad. This is Arthur Morgan, a man straight out of a spaghetti western film, equally as iconic and even more interesting than our favorite Hollywood leading men. But his success as a character wasn't always a given. Today, we're setting our iron sights on Arthur Morgan and figuring out what makes him the perfect anti-hero. Now, we all know how much Rockstar likes their edgy anti-hero protagonists. Unambiguous good guys don't really exist in any Rockstar video games. Their most popular franchises are packed full of questionable morals, upsetting character choices, and dubious legality. That's half the reason why we love them. And back in the early 2010s, no game or character represented those trademark Rockstar ethics better than Red Dead Redemption's protagonist, John Marston. Years before that, I rode in a gang. We robbed banks, trains, held people ransom. We killed people we didn't like. A badass outlaw with a loving family, Marston became a perfect example of how to do a nuanced character in video games correctly, and his story became one that was worthy of his own spaghetti western film. The reason we're dwelling on this now is because, although it seems ridiculous, Red Dead Redemption 2 was fighting an uphill battle by choosing to focus on Arthur instead of John. This was the gaming industry in the mid-2010s. The most revered characters at the time were people like Geralt from the Witcher series or Nathan Drake in Uncharted. By March of 2017, we had seen what happens when a beloved franchise ditches its main protagonist with the widely despised release of Mass Effect Andromeda. There was a precedence for this sort of thing and Rockstar was going against the flow of the industry. So there were a lot of questions from fans back in 2016 and 2017 about whether this was a good move for the series and why they would change the protagonist in the first place. For some, the answers were clear before the game even came out. The second trailer for RDR2 rolled around in September of 2017 and was a huge turning point for a lot of fence sitters. It was the first time we were introduced to Arthur and fans could immediately see that he was going to perfectly embody everything we loved about Red Dead. He was an instantly intimidating figure. It was obvious that Arthur would be just as deadly as John Marston, but also just as conflicted. Like our favorite heroes of old, he was threatening people with a smile on his face and pledging his loyalty to his friends. And he looked like a badass while doing it. Yes, this rambling man was going to meet our expectations. Actually, he would exceed them. But we had to wait until the game's release to find that out. And you don't have to be told that when Red Dead Redemption 2 came out in October of 2018, it was ridiculously successful. We've talked about that on this channel before, but a huge reason for the game's success is that Rockstar finally perfected their approach to having an anti-hero as a protagonist. But how exactly did they perfect it? What did Rockstar do with RDR2 and Arthur Morgan that they hadn't done with any other game or character in their backlog? That question doesn't have a cut and dry answer, but what else would you expect when we're talking about a complicated character like Arthur Morgan? First of all, you can't really examine Arthur without also looking at the main storyline of the game. Constructed by Dan Hauser and the Rockstar writing team, RDR2's story is that of a man with very little choice left in life, and he's finding out that he really doesn't fit in the world anymore. The Lawless West ended up being the perfect setting for an anti-hero like Arthur, as it provided a great space for him and the players to fully understand what kind of man Arthur truly was, and how terrible his actions were. When a game is set in a crime-ridden city like the GTA series, it's a lot easier to get wrapped up in that power trip of being a crime boss among a bunch of other crime bosses lording over a faceless population. But the world of Red Dead Redemption feels close-knit and sometimes even a little fragile. New towns are just sprouting up, people are trying to build lives for themselves, and Arthur is in the middle of it all, robbing and killing and causing chaos. But he's not just a maniac. Roger Clark plays the role of Arthur Morgan with award-winning grace and grit. The Vanderlyn gang is his family, a family that Arthur willingly walked into danger for. And he walks into danger pretty often. He struggles with his deeds, and depending on how you play him, he tries to right his wrongs. But ultimately, he's loyal to the cause and his brothers. And that doesn't end up being enough. Arthur's death either comes at the hands of another gang member or from tuberculosis, which he got, as he says, beating a man to death <clears throat> for a few bucks 
It's a story of gray morality and the struggle towards good and, well, redemption. And it's the greatest thing to come out of Rockstar Games in ages. But not all the credit can go to Roger Clark and the Rockstar team. Arthur only exists because of the films he was inspired by. The devs really did their homework on this one too, to a level that definitely surpasses the first Red Dead. I mean, the entire main story is based around Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Everything from small easter eggs to the plots of chapters and the way some scenes are arranged pay homage to westerns and samurai dramas. And Roger Clark's performance as Arthur Morgan was heavily inspired by Toshiro Mifune's character in films like Seven Samurai and Yojimbo. He is stoic and hard-edged, yet likable and approachable. He has a sense of humor. Ow! Oh, oh. Careful not to work yourself to death there, uncle. I was thinking. Yeah, does it pay well? He's introspective, but he doesn't hesitate to get violent when he finds it necessary. That duality of his personality helps to reinforce Arthur's status as an anti-hero. He's a wild card, and he could turn at any moment. A lot of that personality actually comes from Clark's vocal performance. He switches between friendly and threatening tones with a natural ease that really sells the idea of a man who operates on his own code of ethics when he's screaming and demanding the money from someone who owes him. It's terrifying. And when he says, I tried. <laughs> In the end, I did. It's heartbreaking. But a lot of the more subtle character choices that reflect his personality are in the way Arthur moves. We can see his inherent bravado in the way he walks and how he's not afraid to take up space in the scene. He looks directly in the eyes of the people he's talking to or threatening, but when a moment calls for something softer, he can seem timid and he'll avert his gaze and fidget like he doesn't want all this attention. You can see the conflict in his eyes when he's faced with a tough decision, and the only reason such minute detail is even possible is thanks to the advancements in motion capture technology. Rockstar used what's called performance capture, where not only are an actor's movements captured, but also their voice. So instead of re-recording lines in a sound booth, the entire performance gets put on screen just like a live-action movie. This practice isn't new for Rockstar, but Red Dead Redemption 2 produced the best results by far, even if they had to be mindful of hardware restraints. Now, not only did using performance capture give the actors a chance to play off each other, but it helped to ground their performances in reality. They were expected to fully embody every aspect of their character in every scene, rather than simply focusing on either their physical actions or their lines. And all this mixed together resulted in some incredibly full and well-rounded characters especially in the case of Arthur Morgan. Roger Clark and the devs took great care in building up his portrayal as a tortured, soft-hearted man and ended up creating a character that's deeply complex. He could believably go either way in any given scenario, so whether players make high or low honor decisions, this anti-hero Arthur Morgan seems realistic. Which is great because a huge part of the game is about player choice. This addition was massive for Rockstar Games. In the past, the company had implemented very limited choices into their games, most notably the final mission of GTA V. One of the reasons Rockstar hadn't really dabbled in player choice before is likely because it's not an easy thing to do. When making an anti-hero protagonist, giving players the ability to make their own choices is it's tricky. Usually, games with honor systems operate on a very literal level. You do good things, you're a good person. You do bad things, you're a bad person. Think Mass Effect's Paragon and Renegade system, or Fable's good and evil alignments. But Red Dead Redemption 2 is different. It's more complicated because the character has a very clear and distinct personality outside of the choices the player makes for him. Arthur can make good choices, he can spare lives and help out people in need, or he can be cruel for the sake of cruelty. This would be hell for the canon of most games and characters, yet Rockstar has masterfully made sure that however a player chooses to navigate Arthur's story, it wraps up neatly with his overarching anti-hero characterization. Whether he tries to do good deeds or not, he has a responsibility to the gang. He's always dragged back to the reality that he's an outlaw, a murderer, a wanted man. We've had tens of hours to watch him grow, but he still ends up making brutal decisions. That's really what makes his early demise so tragic, and why he's such an iconic character today. When it comes down to it, Arthur Morgan is a back-talking, no-good killer with more of a heart than he has ever let on. And the credit for the character's existence and legacy 
can't be given to one single person. Writers, directors, animators, actors, and entire teams of people came together to bring him to life. Thousands of hours of work and hundreds of millions of dollars went into the project. They fought against the gaming industry and sometimes even their own fans. But it was all worth it because this is what the perfect anti-hero looks like. Thanks so much for watching this video all the way to the end. If you enjoyed what you saw, definitely make sure you subscribe to Nerdstalgia Gaming, like this video, and check back next week for more content like this.